my, my guy joining <laughs> us right now, Mr. Lofa Tutubu. Lofa, what's up, man? How you been? What's up, fellas? I'm good, man. It's good to see you. It's been way too long. Wish we were hanging out in L.A. together and, you know, you could critique my fitness and, and help me out. But uh, <laughs> it's good to see you nonetheless. How, how is how is life, you know, being the host of the Believe in Seahawks podcast and, and everything else you got going on? Oh, it's great, man. Um, you know, I, I did a guest spot with Brett Davin on the Believe in uh, Seahawks, you know, on the Believe Network and uh, turned into like a permanent thing. And, you know, I love talking football, so it was uh, it's pretty seamless, and I'm enjoying myself doing it. Lovo, what's Russell Wilson up to? Where's he going, man? Why does he, why does he want to get out of Seattle? You love Seattle. People love Seattle. What's the deal? Comes out guns blazing, huh? <laughs> I know. Um, I at least warmed you up a little bit. <laughs> no, yeah. You know, we would like to know over here, too. It's um, every day. It's a new team. I just got off Philly radio, and they're like, hey, we heard Russ is coming. I was like, well, that's news to me because I, I didn't hear that one. But – um, yeah, we'll see what happens. It was, uh, there was too much chatter last year for it not to be true this year. So we're all holding our breath over here and, and hoping he doesn't want to change the scenery. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens though. It's really kind of a wait and see game. Lofa Tadupa with us right now. LeVan Guy's live over here at Mohawk Honda and, uh, Lofa, like I, obviously you don't want to lose a guy like Russ, but if he was to go somewhere, what's the team that makes the most sense to you? You know, I thought it would be New Orleans because they got a really strong defense and, and Sean Payton, but then Sean Payton retires. And so now I think you could probably take the, them off the board. Um, from, uh, Philly, you think about it, their defense does look pretty good. Um, and it would be them and, you know, probably swapping Hurts, which, you know, we would be open to. A young quarterback that's athletic, that can make you know, great plays. And, um, and I think – you know, it wouldn't be a total rebuild if you get a guy like Hurts. You know, he, he can do a lot of things that we're used to seeing with Russell. Um, you know, obviously you can't put him in Russell's category yet because of, you know, all the passing yards and wins that Russell has. But I think you can go young. You have plenty of money and cap space to go young and then go get some more defense uh, pieces and uh, and really compete real quick. Lofa Tadupa with us right now, and we are live here at Mohawk, kind of getting ready for the, the Super Bowl. Yeah, I feel like the last time we saw uh, Lofa in person, we were asking a tough question of how to slow down Patrick Mahomes. Now we got to talk about the defensive side. Your defensive player, Aaron Donald, man, double oh. team, triple team. Like We're talking an all-time great player on the defensive line for the Rams. The Bengals got a tough way. How, how do you slow this dude down? I mean, it's not like you can just run outside zone or toss either because he can run it down. He's, I mean, he was like a 4'6 guy when he came out of college, and he still looks it. Um, but, yeah, and then, you know, what's even scarier is they, uh, they added Vaughn Miller. So, But Aaron Donald, man, he's really in a, in a class of his own in terms of defenders. It's, it's Aaron Donald, and then it's the rest. That's really how it is. Um, it's incredible what he's able to do, even when they do double, triple team, chip him. Um, they've tried everything possible and yeah, you might slow him down a bit, but he's still going to, you know, cause havoc. Lofa, how do you watch the game? Like, cause I know, I know when your team's involved, there's Jersey changing, there's everything to try and get the, the, the momentum in your favor. How do you watch the Super Bowl when your team's not in it? Uh, it's less stressful. I know it's disappointing <laughs> because we don't have a chance to win it, but, uh, you know, go Bengals is how I'm, I'm watching it this year. Cause you know, look, I can't. I know I got ties to L.A. You know, I went to uh, Southern Cal, and then my dad even played one year for the Rams. But I can't root for the guys in my division. Yeah, but, I, but, I, but, I, bet, but I bet the Rams before the season started. I mean, come on. Oh, what about our friendship? Yeah. What about us, man? Yeah, my bad, my bad. Uh, <laughs> I, hope they, I hope they cover for you, but uh, – <laughs> Wait, they're, they're, are they the favorites? Okay, that doesn't. Yeah, they are. They are. But I was gonna let it go and just hope. So I was just gonna take the well wish. Love, well, hang on a second. <laughs> you, are you a West Coast guy, a California guy, USC, all this stuff. It sounds like you want the Rams to fail because, like USC, that used to be the big team in LA. Like, is there a little bit of resentment here? Oh, SC is still the big team. Did you hear right, me right. Lincoln Riley? Did you hear me <laughs> got Lincoln Riley? Every, you know, we're getting recruits entering the portal every other day. It's we're back. SC is back, baby, and we still are the best show in town. Who do you think's higher paid, the Rams or the or the, or USC? <laughs> <laughs> It's legal, legal now. It's legal. It's legal. It's legal. <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> uh, Lobo Zubu, of course, uh, you know, host of uh, Believe in, in the Seahawks podcast and, and just an all-around great guy, big-time football fan. But with, with this game, 
you kind of got like the, the divergent in quarterback. You got the young kid who's here a little earlier than people thought. And then you got the guy who, you know, we always thought he was good enough to be here, but was held back, which if just rooting on the guys, not former division, who, whose storyline is more fun for you and somebody you want to see hoist the trophy at the end? I mean, both are, both are incredible stories. I mean, Stafford to stay, you know, it, it fellas, it's hard to lose in this league in turn. It is wearing on you. I luckily I've only had two losing seasons or well, three, we won the division with the losing seasons. So <laughs> it's a winning season, <laughs> but, but, but to, you know, I was blessed to play six season and four of them were division champs. And like, it's easy to get back and keep going. But like when you have that one losing season, you know, and then it turns into two, it's like, man, we got to get back to winning. And so, um, you know, I commend him for it was a lot of years where they might go, you know, to the playoffs every three years, four years. And, you know, so um, happy for him that he's finally getting his chance. Um, you know, I think this could actually really cement his legacy. Um, everybody's been talking Hall of Fame. I don't know how many Pro Bowls he has, but he's got all the numbers and he's a well-liked guy. And if he gets this and even if he doesn't get the MVP, if he gets the, the trophy, you know, under his belt, uh, it's hard not to with all those numbers. Then you look over at Burrow, and, I mean, that storyline, this is a kid that was passed up all, like, three times in college. Ended up transferring and, um, you know, won the job. And then in the second year, he took LSU to an outright national title. Comes with all the accolades, you know, Heisman. Goes right into a tough, a tough a place where they haven't really done much winning, right? And, uh, and turns them around after an ACL. So how do you not like him and everything that, that he brings to the table? Um, you know, the first time in the playoffs, he wins all three games so far. It's, it's actually incredible uh, what he's done. And uh, they haven't been easy games either. I mean, coming from behind against Kansas City. So it's, uh, it's incredibly happy for either guy that gets it. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking elsewhere. If I'm going MVP, I'm looking at the running backs, whether, you know, uh, either either team. But really, uh, in particular, Joe Mixon, I think, is a guy that's been underutilized. All right, we got Lofa Tadupa with us. And, of course, you know, you, you were one of the best linebackers. We had Amon Green just show up randomly to start the show. <laughs> and, and, and I asked him, I said, man, you ran angry. When you would hit the hole, everything's perfect. What position did you less like seeing coming at you, the safety or the linebacker? He said he didn't care because he was going to bring the pain. Who, what running back did you least like seeing when you hit that hole? Well, he was one of them. I mean, I remember we played him in 06, and, I mean, he, he looked he looked like a fullback. But he was way faster. I mean, that's how that's how uh, big he was, and uh, he, he hit me on the sideline, and I was just like, "Wow, he's still going!" You know, somebody please tackle him. But um, you know, of all the running backs, I'd rather I'd rather take on the the bigger power backs than I would the uh, the the fast little guys. Man, those guys were a headache. You know, especially because if they get out, I'm not going to catch them. But uh, one name always comes up, and you know, it's my guy, Fred Taylor, absolute beast. I don't think he ever got enough credit for for all the things he did down in Jacksonville in his time. If you look at his stats, I mean, he, he's right there for, you know, Hall of, Hall of Fame worthy. Spot on. Fred Taylor's stats get overlooked constantly, yeah. especially the Hall of Fame going down tonight. Fred Taylor does not get enough love for how good he was in his career. Well, we know we t you take care of your body. You're always in great shape in the expansion of the NFL. Another regular season game, the expanded postseason you look at these guys, like they have to be in better shape than ever before to get through a full NFL season. Yeah, or they just need zone and CBD. <laughs> you picked up what I was dropping. You knew exactly you what I was doing. You said zone earlier, and I almost did it right then. <laughs> Thank you, that LU. But no, you're absolutely right. It's um, 16 games is tough. You add another one and then one more in the playoffs, so it's even harder to win it. Um, you know, now that only one team gets a bye week, that, that number one seed is, is so – uh, crucial. I mean, it didn't didn't work out for the two number one seeds this year, but it's uh, having that extra you know week of rest. I know every time we played in the playoffs, uh, we had it my first year the number one seed, and then the next two years we didn't have it. And you could you could feel the speed changing in terms of how fresh the other team was that had a week off compared to you know us going you know right through to week eighteen and nineteen. But um, we got to get you out here, man. What do you, what do you come what, to New York? Yeah. What do you, like you talk about all these weeks, you're you're an upstate guy. Well, you're a, you're a Western New York guy, right? Yeah. What? I'm a I'm a Massachusetts guy. Oh, I thought I, thought, I keep wanting to put you in Buffalo. Buffalo. I like you too much oh. to be a mass <laughs> hole. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thurman Thomas is my favorite uh, player of all time. I think right. that's where 
we talked about it. And then, you know, all those, remember when we were, what we were playing, uh, it was 2020, and I said no New York team will beat us, and I think all three beat us. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was a horrible, horrible prediction. <laughs> The Lofa curse is, is one of the most legendary curses in the history of the show. If you would take the time to say, like, like you know, Thurman Thomas isn't coming down that tunnel. This one's not coming down. They would just get run. It was just it was just a thing. So, so, like, when you're making the prediction for the Super Bowl, and we know you want the Bengals, do you want to, like, throw some Ram greats at us? Or, like, what are we doing here? Oh, man, fellas. Kevin Green's not coming down that tunnel. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Everett, uh, Henry Ellard, uh, you know, we're, they're not coming. Those greats are Jack Youngblood. We're, they're not coming down that tunnel. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think here we go. The Bengals are going to be doing the icky shuffle finally in a, in a winning uh, fashion. You're one of our favorite guys, man. We love when you make time for us. Love with the Tufu. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll send you I'll send you some random text during the, the, the Super Bowl and, you know, make another order of uh, Zone and CBD because that was – I'm getting the gym. I'm going back in tomorrow morning. It's, it's time. So I'm going to need it to get through the joints. Hey, man. Just, just show up, man. When you show up, you'll show out naturally, man. Your work ethical team. 